Now, if you look into each term, the first term is the rate of kinetic and internal energy added to the system. Kinetic energy is 1 over 2 rho v squared. Internal energy is rho u. Okay? And you add them by means of convection. So it must be multiplied by velocity. This one we already derived from the very beginning of our class. Then the term rate of change. That change is account, taking account by del dot this term. Okay? And delta here, in, in general, the, when you write down equation, you have in minus out, in minus out. Okay. But this one is considered rate of increase, net rate of increase. So this one would be negative up front. This is essentially this term. For conduction, conduction can be represented using Fourier law. The net rate of change by conduction is del dot Q, right? For work, work done by molecular transported can be represented by two terms, del dot PV. That's flow work plus the other term, tau dot V. That's work done by molecular transport. Okay? Then external force. If you think external force is basically gravity force, work done by gravity force can be calculated from this term. If we neglect this term, then we have the rate of increase or accumulation term. Accumulation term would be the change in energy with respect to time, whereas the energy inside will be considered kinetic and internal energy. Kinetic energy is 1 over 2 rho v square. Internal energy is rho u. All right? Now, if I define Potential energy. Per unit mass. This one is represented by capital C hat. Hat here is per unit mass. This one is uh, potential energy. Okay, and potential energy is directly associated with gravity force. So if you look into gravity, gravity is a vector. Uh, let's look like this. If you somehow calculate potential energy, potential energy is, according to the conventional potential energy, is mgh, right? 
if you look per unit mass, you have G times height. Okay? Potential energy is associated with G and level or height. Okay? So, if I use this form and write it down three dimensionally, this one is in Z direction only. If you try to write it down in three dimension, in generic terms, you can get the definition of potential energy per unit mass like this. You can define potential energy per unit mass according to this following equation. G here is equal to minus change in potential energy per unit mass. All right. We can prove that this equation works by looking into G. G itself is a vector. If you follow that equation, write it down in form of vector. The potential energy is not vector. The whole thing here is scalar. And scalar here is operated by vector operator. As the whole, it will be a vector. All right? So if I write it down for Cartesian coordinate, del would be I differentiate with respect to x times scalar phi. That would be phi. Okay? In y direction, you have del by del y phi plus k del by del z of phi. Okay? From this definition, if you write it down in terms of vector operation, you get this equation. If you consider C component only, that means you consider G Z equal to del phi by del Z, right? Just in, in general, if you look into this component, neglect component of G in X and component of G in Y, look into GZ only. For this GC, it can be the magnitude of GC would equal to this term. Okay? Now, from here, if you integrate it, you integrate GC, you get GZ DZ equal to D of potential energy. Once you integrate it, what you get would be GZ times Z equal to potential energy per unit mass. Right? This is the same equation or same formula that you have remembered from your high school. Potential energy equal to MGH, Mg times height. But this, this one is potential energy per mass. Right? You have potential energy equal to MGH or MGZ. If you take mass here to, to be to divide the potential energy, you have energy per unit mass, that's called phi, should equal to G times Z, equal to that. That's proof that our definition here should be okay. All right? So, if our definition G can be related to the potential energy, then in our equation, the term that's contained G is this term. So I'm going to write that term by using this definition. 
row v dot g. That's supposed to be work done by gravity force. Should equal to g here has minus sign up front. You have minus rho v dot del times dels of the potential energy. All right. Since g is del of phi, you take g to be del of phi, minus sign is going up front. Rho here is scalar, so scalar can be going inside here as rho v. Okay? And this product can be expanded like this according to definition of dot product. How can we do that? We have definition according to calculus. If you have del dot SV, it should equal to del S dot V plus S del V. Okay? This is properties of dot products involving del. In our case, S would be phi. V here is rho V. All right? That means we can expand our work done by external force into two terms containing potential energy. However, this term by equation of continuity. We used to have equation of continuity early on that say that this term is del rho by dt. Right? Because from equation of continuity You have d rho by dt minus del dot rho v equal to zero. That's called equation of continuity. So if you rearrange equation of continuity, you see that this term is essentially differentiated of rho by dt. So that we can take this term back to our original equation. Now, this term has differentiated with respect to time. So I'm going to bring it up here. I think, I'm sorry, this one is plus, this one is negative. This one's supposed to be negative. 